all right detroit we are back so we're here at december 1st of the 22 23 season and we are sitting at 9 12 and 1 but we did see that the stats aren't actually looking too awful so what i think we're going to go ahead and do is i do want to try and make the playoffs this year but i think if we're going to turn around we got to turn it around now so what i'm looking at is Peron is up on the top line with larkin but Zadina being up here, I think might be hurting production on the top line. I think this might even be able to be a better line if we had a, uh, a better sniper up here. And that option would be Jacob Verana. He is a good sniper. Let's see. He does fit on line one pretty well. So we should still keep the plus, which I like to see. Now, I think that is the only move we're going to make. I mean, Raymond is a minus four. Cop is a minus one. Amber Tuzi is a plus three, which is interesting. Not too bad of minuses. And Raymond has 15 points in 22 games. So I don't really want to shake this up as well as Cop has 18. Bertuzzi's got 22. So he's point per game as well. So I don't think we want to shake up this line. I think having that plus three on the second line definitely gives us a bump up compared to other teams. But I think Kubalik, Roslovic, and Zadina will be a good third line. And then I don't think we want to change this. Now, they are the bottom line. They're not outstanding defensively, so they're definitely going to struggle. And then same thing down here with Pissick and Hag. They are a minus 6 and a minus 2. Sherrod is a minus 5 and Mata is a minus 4. But when you have a second line defensive pairing that would be normal teams thirds, that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, so I don't think there's anything we're going to do about that this year. I don't think we're going to make any trades. I think we got the pieces to make this team work. I think what we're going to do is maybe bolster that defense in free agency next year. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to leave it the way it is, just swapping Verana and Zadina. And now Zadina's line is third line scoring forward. So he isn't going to be hindered by being down there. Um, and Verana is second line forward. So getting him up on first line time isn't awful. And he is the sniper with the playmaker of Larkin and the two way forward of Peron, who are both getting good points. So maybe he can get up into that 20, 30 goal range for this year. Um, but I think we are just going to hop into some more simulation. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to do one more month here, and then I'm going to go ahead and assign the scouts out again at January 1st. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Now, we are at 9, 12, and 1. Um, I don't think so. Giovanni Smith is fully healed. I do want to get him back in. So, And I do like the way the injuries are going this year. Uh, it's not too bad when it comes to how much it's like... Uh, how much is hindering the ability for me to actually play the game. So I think I'm going to leave it where it is. Uh, oh, crap. I'm going to have to cancel this sim because it's going to bug out with being AHL line back to sim. So Andrew Kopp has been injured with a mild concussion. Now that hurts. So, and it's December 11th. That's not too far. Realistically, I could manually edit or I could just have them fill. But I'm going to go ahead and move Roslovic up. That still has a plus three. So hopefully Raymond and Bertuzzi can still get some stuff done on that line. We're going to go ahead and move Suter up to there. That's still not a bad third line. And then we are going to go ahead and toss in Adam Ernie. Now, Adam Ernie is in the center, but the good part is Rasmussen is. So let's go ahead and move Rasmussen over the centers for his faceoff. 74. Ernie is only at 65. So... I don't think that's too bad. It's only going to be about a week, maybe a week and a half of having Andrew Cop out. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back. Um, okay, cool. Let's go ahead and cancel. So we know that Cop is going to come back before this Carolina game. So we can just go to here for now. Um, but I do want to try to push this team to the playoffs. Um we are coming back to 500 here, so hopefully we can keep pushing forward. Now, a loss to the Panthers. They are a good team. Uh, Jan Bednar has been injured with a swollen knee. That's the backup goalie, so I'm just going to head coach replace since we only have one other player that can be there. And Andrew Kopp is fully healed, so let's go ahead and get him back in. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is just go down to Ernie and replace Kopp with Ernie and then do the line changes. Uh, so Kopp is fully healed. Let's go ahead and get him back in. Uh, so what we can do is just switch him straight back to there, go ahead and put Suter there and then Suter there. There we go. So 
we've got everybody back in the lineup and let's see how the rest of this month goes it looks like it's a little bugged out so we did take a win off of dallas we're only one game under 500 now we can go ahead and go to january 1st so like i said if it comes trade deadline and we're nowhere near a competitive team i might offload someone like andrew cop i might offload uh ben Sherratt. i mean ben Sherratt. theoretically i would like to offload anyways actually coming down to it we are a little bit above 500 so i might not make this move right away but i am going to do my due diligence as an owner larkin is still point per game which is really nice um we are seven two and one in the last 10 which is really good um but we are going to go ahead and just i thought there was a yeah trade players here we go so we're going to go ahead and look at Sherratt. Now, doing a one-for-one one with Sherratt might not make the most sense just because if we're going to replace him with someone, I doubt a team would want to uh, would want to get someone older and with someone with more salary, but we are just going to go ahead and take a look. So Anaheim definitely wants him. Let's see what they're looking at defensively uh dmitry kulikov might not be a bad option because his salary clears after this year he is a minus seven and defensive defenseman i might not want to go with kulikov because i think the reason Sherrod is such a minus is he is a defensive defenseman so he's not helping with point production um so i don't think anaheim is going to be the way to go so let's just see the coyotes do want him let's see what they're looking at on their blue line um let's see someone down here like valamaki wouldn't be a bad option we could re-sign him he could also grow a little bit so that's not an awful option uh, what about jj moser he's top six so i'm not gonna go for him but you valamaki might not be a bad option um he is a two-way defender he's got good defensive stats um but he also can help in the point production so i might want to try to go for valamaki now I, I would want to add something because we're they're taking more salary for an older player that's not an upgrade. So maybe giving them something back. Let's see what we have. Now, I know in the AHL, we have a couple of those defensemen that, that we're just not going to play. So maybe someone like Sabrango we could toss back. Uh, Anaheim would have more than 45 skaters. So I don't think we're going to go with skaters. I don't want to finagle with that. Uh, let's see. They do want all the draft picks possible. Let's just try it with Sherratt in the seventh for Valimaki. Let's see if they will take that. Trade accepted. So we went younger, and we got a two-way defenseman for that second line rather than a defensive defenseman. So let's go ahead and just toss him on our lines. I don't mind that. It's someone who could theoretically get better and actually be a second-line defenseman for us, but it's someone who can potentially get us some more points going on that second-line defensive now i know it says minus three it's probably just a bug let's go ahead and check it is just a bug so we have yuso valamaki on the team he is a plus uh he was playing in calgary which is a good team um but he's got top four medium at 24 he could grow to like an 82 83 if he keeps performing well and i think he can put up some points now mata is a defensive defenseman i'm pretty sure pissick is as well and robert hag uh, so maybe someone like Mata moving as well wouldn't be too bad. Um, let's go ahead and check and see if there are any other teams. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to go to the player search rather than this screen and see if there are any players we for sure want to go after that are two-way defensemen. So I'm going to go over to team management. We're going to go ahead and go to the player search now. What I'm going to do here is position, we're going defense, uh, player role, we're going to do uh, any, I'm cool with any, player type, we want a two-way defenseman, uh, handedness, we would prefer them to be left-handed on this side, um, and then age max, we're going to go ahead and toss at like 26, uh, and then we're just going to go ahead and search. Now, there could be some high players here. Uh, yeah, there are definitely some higher players here, but we're looking for that like 81 to 82 range. I am cool with giving up later draft picks. Uh, so let's see. I don't want a medium elite. I don't want to put someone above, but this is relatively low trade value here for Dunn. Now he is top four medium. He's an 83. Vince Dunn, he is a minus 10. I want to find someone who is in the habit of being a plus. Haig is injured, so we're not going to go there. Keandre Miller is a plus 13. He's got four goals. Two-way defender. He's got good defensive stats, but he also can play offensively. 
Let's just do our due diligence. Ty Smith is a minus one. Mikey Anderson. I think Keandre Miller wouldn't be a bad option. So let's see if we could do Keandre Miller for Olimata. So let's see. The Rangers, they are a good team, but it's not like we're downgrading them at all. Uh, at least not too far. So let's see. Where is Olimata? Here he is. So we are definitely going to have to give up a decent bit of trade value. So someone like Keandre Miller can grow. So I wouldn't be completely against the St. Louis Brews are probably going to be a good team. Look at that difference in trade value. So they're probably killing it this year. So that's going to be a late second rounder anyways. I'm thinking maybe toss that in and that might work for us. So Olimata for Keandre Miller. Do that one for one. We're, get, we're making them take on a little salary and a little bit of an older player, but we do give them a second round pick. Let's see. Trade rejected. So they don't want St. Louis's second round pick, but they do want our third. Let's see if we can get it for a sixth and a fifth. So we have Mata, a sixth and a fifth for Keandre Miller. Trade rejected. The, va the value is just a bit low. So maybe take out the sixth and add in the fourth. Let's see if they'll take that and they do so we're restacking our blue line here in detroit we got keandre miller and yuso valamaki so let's go ahead and edit the lines and get keandre miller in there so now we have two two-way defensemen rather than defensive defensemen on that second defensive pairing which i do really like and i think keandre miller he's an 83 so that is a definite upgrade for us now is that going to be a bug for a minus two hopefully it is okay so we definitely upgraded our blue line with Keandre Miller, who's got top four medium at 22, so he can still grow. Um, and then Falamaki, who's also top four medium, he can still grow. They're both in the habit of being plus players who can contribute offensively. He's got nine points, and Miller has nine points as well. So that looks really nice. Cider's sitting at 13, and Hironica's sitting at 13. So I definitely think we upgraded our defense, and we also... Um, upgraded our future we brought in two younger players that can stay around for a while if we choose to do so so honestly the way this team is set up i do really like it so let's go ahead and get another month of simulation done here go ahead and get out of all of these screens or let's finish the month of december that is and um we can go ahead and see if those moves helped or hurt the detroit red wings so we're going to go ahead and take a look at stats after this month, um, but before the scouting. So we're going to include it here at the end. Uh, we do have the Tampa Bay Lightning, which are in third place in our division. That would be a big game to take. Same with the Senators. They are um, right below us, so we definitely don't want them passing us. Um, as far as Buffalo, same kind of thing. We want to take that game and Ottawa. So we have four big games out of five games here. Uh, and all against 500 and or winning teams except for Buffalo and Pittsburgh. So let's go ahead and hop through and see how this simulation goes. Now, I don't expect us to take all of these. Ooh, a one nothing win, though. I like that a lot. Uh, Bednar, I do want to edit lines manually because I don't want best lines on that AHL squad. Um, so Marco Casper is already up to a 73, which is nice to see. So he is growing pretty steadily down here let's go and see edvinson has stayed at a 75 let's see how he's playing he is a plus seven with 17 points in 26 games so that's really nice so let's go ahead and not penalty kill but goalies let's go ahead and get bednar in here instead of van pottelberg uh there we go how is kosa doing down here 13 wins in 20 games he is playing phenomenally so it looks like that hl squad is doing really well they have at least 13 wins out of 20 games uh, for him playing I do need to cancel this because it's gonna bug out in the simulation yeah 18 7 and 2 for the HL squad so that's really nice so let's go ahead and switch back here to the NHL and two shutout games in a row after improving our defense that is impressive um, let's go ahead and we are going to get up to the first of January um, so I definitely think that was an improvement on our team uh, Mark Pissick has been injured uh, with him. I'm just going to head coach replace his player because he's bottom line. So I'm good with Lindstrom getting in there for him. Um, three to over overtime loss. We still took a point. Another overtime loss still took a point, And hopefully we can take another one off Ottawa. Uh, it does. We did not. But we're we're up to four points out of a playoff spot in that wild card spot. So we are above 500. Let's go ahead. And we are 36 games in here. Almost at the halfway point. Only five games under. 
Now, it looks like the production from Larkin has slowed down a little bit in these last couple games, but the production from the second line has jumped. Yeah, Bertuzzi's up at 33 points in the season. Raymond's up at 34 and up to a 35, which is really nice. Larkin is still at 34 points, so he's playing pretty well. Prawn up at 31 is really good. Um, Varana has not really been contributing on that first line. He's at four. He's at only at 16 points on the first line, which isn't too great for us. Hironic hasn't gotten any more points, but Cider's gotten three more. He's a plus 10. So honestly, like I said, I think I like the way our team is structured this year. Um, I don't think we're going to be a dominating team, but I do like the way they're structured. I think it is going to be a decent squad. Um, and as far as our top Cisco's, they are producing, um, except for Verona. I don't know why he isn't. So maybe someone like Bertuzzi up on that first line, but I don't want to break up that plus three on the second line. They do seem to pr be producing really well. Uh, and Raymond seems to be the goal scorer there, which is definitely going to get him growing. Um, so I think I want to leave it the way it is. We'll just ride the season out with these lines. Um, Hopefully, Verona can get a little more goal scoring with Larkin being the playmaker on that line. He is taking a lot of shots, but same with Piran and Verona is just really not taking many shots. But let's go ahead and take a look at goalies here. Now, Huso playing really well, and Nadelkovic definitely brought it back. He's up to a 9-12 with a 2.89. So I think both of our goalies here are playing well. Let's go ahead and take a look at AHL stats. Yeah, Kosa's having a year 16, 4, and 2. He's definitely playing really well. And same with Bednar, actually. He does have fringe starter medium, but I think him as an AHL lifetime goalie isn't too bad. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at all skaters. Matt Luff has 30 points in 30 games. Zarnik is up at 26. Um, Soderblom's up at 22. That's really nice to see. Perosi, 21. Edvinson is at 19 points in 30 games. He should get some growth if he has if he keeps having a good year like that. Um, Johansson's having a good year on the blue line at 15 points in 30 games. Berggren down at 11 is pretty soft. Wallander at 10 is pretty soft. Casper um, has seven points in 30 games, so that is kind of soft. But he's a plus eight, so he's definitely performing down there. So. I think I like the way it's looking. I'm going to go ahead and get the scouts sent out. And then I will, uh, I'll catch you guys back up when we hop into probably just another month of simulation. So we'll be right back. All right. So jumping back in here, I got the scouts all assigned back out. So we are looking good there. Um, and I think theoretically this team is built the way I like it. The HL team is really performing, which is good to see for all those young guys. Um, so I think we are just going to go ahead and hop back into simulation here and, uh, we'll go month by month here, but, um, we will go ahead and stop at the trade deadline. Um, see if there's any moves we want to make, or if we're just going to fly through this first season. So, uh, Pissick is fully healed. I do want to edit that manually. I don't want to best lines the NHL. Um, so let's go ahead and go into defense here. Lindstrom out for Pissick. And, uh, yeah, we should be able to, uh, get this team really going here. I think we definitely made some good upgrades on defense. Um, so let's just see how the simulation goes. Uh, Oscar Sunkfist has been injured. Uh, we can have head coach replace that player. I'm not too worried about that. He's a winger, so our center won't get moved. Um, but it looks like we're starting to win games. Now we got some good teams coming up here with Florida, Toronto, and Winnipeg. And we, oh, we did win eight to three against Florida, which was very encouraging, but that's a second forward to drop. Or actually, Valeno's in the AHL. Nice. Okay. So Casper is listed as other forward. Sutterblom has been the one producing. Uh, I don't want to move Berger to a center spot. So what we're going to do ahead, what we're going to go ahead and do is Soderblom there, Casper there, Chris Cuolo up, and then we can go ahead and toss in one of the scratch centers with Chase Pearson down there. So we're going to go ahead and leave it like that. Now power play. Let's see, because it's not going to let me leave it unless I fix it. Four-man power play line one. All these are going to be minuses because there's no X factors down here in the AHL. Um, so <clears throat> I am good with the way that this all has been working for the AHL. 
Valeno going down is a bit of a bit of a nuisance, but not too bad. I think we still have the depth here to perform in the HL for these young guys and get Casper a little more ice time, so potentially he can uh, keep growing. Now, let's see. So, Raymond has gone up to an 85. Zadina has gone up to an 82, which is nice. Now, this is going to be my first time experiencing, I, experiencing this. I'm actually going to stop simulation here. Now, I think there is a way. Uh, we did take it. So we scored a lot of goals here and then gave up a lot to Toronto. Toronto is a very good uh, offensive team. But I think there's a way to go check player growth. If I'm wrong, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure there's a way to check player growth. Trade and improve. Is it in here? Definitely not in here. Manage rosters, progress reports. Here it is. So this is what I wanted to look at. So modification. Raymond has 20. Zadina has 12. Rasmussen, is he going down? No, he went up by two. So fighting skill went up and discipline went up. That's okay. Roslovic, natural growth of one on discipline. But raymond here has 20 growth natural growth two on everything for puck skills so his puck skills are really getting up there natural growth on senses uh, so that's really nice his shooting his power is going up his accuracy isn't really but natural growth on defense as well i really like to see that natural growth on skating and natural growth on physical so that's really nice now let's go take a look at the ahl so marco casper is having the most modification um He's having natural growth in senses, which is really nice to see, and natural growth on defense, which is really nice to see. Uh, skating is going up, and physical is going up. Now, with Casper, he is a... Uh, what player type is he again? Marco Casper... Uh, can't remember. I think he might be a 2A forward or a playmaker. Um, so it would be nice to see those uh, puck skills going up, but regardless... Bear Green is having natural growth on defense, physical, and senses, which is good. Um, as far as Tanias Matherin, he's having some natural growth, which is interesting. But the part that's interesting to me is Edvinson isn't having any. So I don't know why he's not having any natural growth, only being 19 with medium elite. But uh, but we digress. Uh, Wallander's having some, Johansson's having some, so that's really nice. Um, Lombardi, Amadeus Lombardi, top nine medium. He is playing really well down with the Flint Firebirds in the... Oh, God, what league is that? I don't remember what league that is. So I don't think we want to sign him quite yet. We'll go and see how many more years of unsigned he has when we get to it. Um, but I don't think we quite want to sign him yet because he, he is growing heavy with the Flint Firebirds. So... That is good to see. Uh, Dylan Larkin is back to leading the team in points, which is really nice. We're 6-2-2 two two in our last 10. Also really nice. Um, so, realistically, I think we're just going to keep going. Now, we have that AHL squad taking care of the AHL injury, so I think we're good there. Um, let's go ahead and just simulate up until those guys come back. Sunkfist is fully healed. I'm going to go ahead and toss him back in there. Uh, get him back on that fourth line so we can go ahead and take Ernie out. How is he doing? He's a minus five in his six games, so definitely not leaving him in there for any defensive uh, aspect. Uh, Sunkfist, I'm pretty sure, yeah, he's classified as a center. Let's go ahead and get him back in there. Now, we should be good without stopping Sim again because it was only an NHL line edit. 2-1 win against Winnipeg. That's nice. Toronto, if we can take a game, that'll be nice. Shootout loss, we took a point. I like that. We're tied with the Bruins for a wildcard spot. We're dropped a little bit there, but 2017-5, as long as we don't get too streaky. Joe Valeno is back, so we're going to go ahead and edit that manually again to make sure that make sure that AHL team is performing at top capability. So, uh, Chase Pearson, thank you for stepping in, bud, but Joe Valeno is coming back in. So, Let's just go ahead and get these guys swapped out. Soderblom back to that second line and Casper back to that third line. Uh, I do like the way that was working. We had a couple games with him up there. He's a plus six. Not really getting a lot of points, but he's doing pretty well. Um, what about Beargrin? 14. So what's odd is these young players don't seem to actually rack up points in the AHL, which is interesting. Uh, Soderblom is the most with 26, but I would expect Valeno to have pretty much a point per game on that top line he is listed as a fourth line forward so he should be able to perform down there i don't know why he's not getting the points but zarnik and hirose are as well as matt luff being at 32 points instead of say soderblom or Berggren. but whatever it ends up being it works for me as long as they're growing 
Uh, we are going to have to cancel Sim because it is going to bug out, but I think the team is in a good spot. Let's go ahead and cancel this Sim, and it looks like we took a loss to Colorado, but a win against Arizona. So we're staying above 500. Uh, we're three point. We're actually one point out of a wild card spot behind the Hurricanes, which isn't too bad. So let's go ahead and get this month simulated. The Vegas Golden Knights are under 500. Hopefully we can take a win. There we go. Nice to see. Um, and also at the end of March is when we're going to toss out our scouts again. So, uh, oh, the Pittsburgh Penguins have fired head coach Braden Turner. That's interesting. Penguins must not be doing too hot. Uh, bad team. Let's, ah, uh, we can't take wins off these bad teams. See Montreal, hopefully. Yep, we take a win off of them. Islanders are a good team. We might be able to, though. There we go. Five to two. So, I mean, we're definitely right up there. We're one point behind a, uh, we're one point behind that wild card spot behind the Bruins. So, and they also have a game in hand on us. So that's not too bad. Uh, we are about 49 games through the season. So let's see. Perron is actually racking up the goals on that top line. That's nice to see. It's not Verana, but someone is doing it. He's a 23 goal scorer so far. So hopefully he can get up into the mid 30s. That would be really nice. Uh, let's see. Our biggest plus is Keandre Miller's a plus 19 on the team. That is really nice to see. So that second line defense pairing is actually playing really, really well. Same with the first line defense pairing. Now, if we were to sort this way, obviously we have Hag and Pissick way down here. That bottom defensive pairing isn't very strong, um, but not much we can do about that. Other than that, um, our team actually looks to be doing pretty well. We are above 500, so I'm not too concerned with that. Uh, Perron and Larkin both at 44 points, Bertuzzi at 42 um raymond up at 40 so he's having himself a good year maybe a 70 point season for him hopefully cop has started to put up more points which is nice to see he's at 31 he is above the 10 goals now hopefully he'll get to about 25 i'm hoping for that out, or not out of cop out of verona he is up at 25 points so he might get a 50 point season um we'll have to see where that goes but let's go ahead and take a look at goalies um same thing Huso still simulating pretty well Nadelkovic did drop off in the save percentage and goals against average but he is our backup so that's not too bad um let's go ahead and take a look at the AHL squad here Kosa's at 19 and 10 still simming very well Bednar is also simming well so that looks good for our AHL squad let's to go ahead and take a look at the skaters 37 points for Zarnik 35 for Luff Soderblom is simming really well at 29 points in 41 games. Edvinson also simming very well at 23 points for a defenseman. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. Casper is all the way down here at 12 points, but he is growing. So I am good with that. He'll probably spend one more year in the AHL after this. He should jump up to like a 76, 77 after this year. Play one more year in the AHL. Hopefully... Uh, get some statistical growth down there. About a point per game is what we're hoping for. Um, but the AHL team at 25, 13, and 3 is a great season for them so far. So, like I said, I think this year is just a push-through year. Um, so I think we are just going to push through with the roster that we have. Just for due diligence, let's go ahead and keep in mind what contracts we might be willing to move at the trade deadline either to improve and or to clear up cap space. Um, we know Larkin's going to need a big contract. Uh, we are at 11 mil. We know Bertuzzi's going to want a bigger contract. But let's go ahead and see here. So it would be someone like uh, Suter, potentially. He's top six low, so we know he's not going to grow anymore. He's not really producing for us, and he's a minus. So maybe moving someone like Suter for more of a defensive player for that bottom line wouldn't be too bad. Actually, that might be a move I want to make now. Um, Sunkfist, I think he's fine. I think I'm going to leave him. Um, as far as anyone else, we did move Sherratt already. We did move those couple defensemen. So I don't think we have anything else truly that we're for sure going to move. Um, but it would be someone like Suter. Uh, I don't think we want to move Bertuzzi. Um, the only reason I would move him, I mean, he's got 42 points. No, I'm not moving Bertuzzi. So maybe Suter we can go look at moving even right now. Let's go ahead and check. We're going to do a player search once again. Um, and because I want to make sure I find someone that fits us. We're not moving him to get rid of him. We're moving him to find a better fit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to forward. Player role. Um, I would like 
a fourth line forward. Um, and I think we want to go to 28 max, but contract years max i want to make sure it is a one-year contract now let's see it's probably gonna be a small list might not be but might be um overalls are looking kind of low we have travis frederick i think trent frederick um i don't think i'd want to go for him what about obey kubel two way forward no nah, I, I wouldn't really want to go for obey kubel so maybe instead of specifically looking for a fourth line forward, we can just take that out and just look for potential fits. So any forwards um, now is there? OK, so this is what I want to look for. Defense rating of four stars or higher. Let's go ahead and search on that. See what we're looking at here. So obviously we're going to have a really it's going to be all the top to sort of players. But Pavel Zaka, that might be a little too rich. Um, I don't think I want to go there. Now let's just take a look. It's great defensive stats, so he would definitely play well on that, like on those bottom lines. But I think once again, I don't want to give up too much in exchange for Suter. So <clears throat> getting someone like Zaka probably wouldn't be what we want to do. So let's maybe drop it down on that defensive category and or let's raise it up to 30. Let's see if that includes anyone under Zaka. It might. Uh, let's go ahead and check. Uh, it doesn't look like it. So let's go ahead and drop that. Um, let's go ahead and drop this down to three and a half. Let's go ahead and search for that and see what we're looking at. So sort by overall. Let's look at these bottom guys. So we have someone like Geeky, Yanmark. What about Matthias Yanmark? He's a minus 12. No, I wouldn't want to go for Yanmark. What about Danton Heinen? He's a minus three, but he does have decent defensive stance stats. Uh, David Kampf, he's a plus 11. He's got good faceoffs. He is injured right now. I don't want to go for that. Uh, Alex Kerfoot, he's a plus 12. He's got good defensive stats. Top six exact. It's only one year. Let's try Alex Kerfoot. Now, I'm pretty sure he is a Maple Leafs, but we're not doing a top player trade. We're not giving them something crazy. So, not trade value. We want to sort by overall here. So, let's go ahead and see. Let's toss Suter in there. They want Suter. Uh, they don't necessarily want to give up Kerfoot. It looks like we would have to give up something for that. Um, so, you know what we're going to do is back in this player search... We're going to do a different set of parameters since we are doing one year toss it all the way up to even like 34 uh but let's go ahead and grab that four star defensive rating and see what we're looking at so we know we're going to have all these top guys but let's scroll all the way down so someone like luke glendening bringing him back to the red wings Ooh, that's a penalty killer it's a plus player. I'm thinking Luke Glendening for Pew Suter. And that's a Western Conference trade, which I like. Let's see if they want Suter. If they want Suter, this would be an absolute ideal trade. If they don't, we can still probably make it work. They want Suter. Now, Dallas would be over salary cap. So, <clears throat> hmm. Let's see, do they have anyone else with a year left that we could take their cap just for this year and potentially just toss in a bad pick? So we're looking at one year left. We're not going to get Pavelski. Um, let's see, is there anyone? Kervanta, 26, bottom six, medium. Kiviranta, Joel Kiviranta. We could take that. So the other thing I was thinking is maybe like a Gurionov. No, we don't want Gurionov. What about Kivi Ranta? Let's see, does that put them? Detroit would have more than 45 skaters in the organization. Ooh, so they are a really tight cap team that's going to make this tough. So instead of Kivi Ranta, let's see about maybe just retaining some of Suter's salary because they don't. he only has a year left, so we're not going to be paying him after this year anyways. Let's just go ahead and retain 50 because he doesn't have that high of a salary anyways. That'll get the trade value much better for him. Dallas would still be over cap, but it's not by much. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. I really want to get Luke Glenn Denning for Suter. Hmm. Let's see what we're looking at here. So, what other pieces do they maybe have that we could go after? Maybe Colin Miller? You know what? Let's add Colin Miller. And let's give them... Go to defenseman. Now, I think this might work perfectly. Let's give them... Let's see. What about Pissick? They want Pissick. They want Suter for Glendening and Miller. But I can tell I'm taking some from them with Colin Miller for Pissick. And then we're giving a little bit. Actually, so you know what? We're giving a little bit for Suter for Glendening. But they're giving a little bit for Miller and Pissick. They want both. Let's try it. Trade rejected. Value is just a bit low. Now, that's what I expected. So, what I'm thinking is rather than any skaters, we can go really late here. If it's just a bit low, now, this is a video game, but I don't think this is a fleece for going, like, a fourth, because they're a relatively old team. A fourth in a couple of years? Trade accepted. So, let's see what we're looking at here now. We do have 21 skaters up here, so I don't know why it does that instead of going to edit lines. Now, let's go ahead and get Glenn Denning on that fourth line center role. That should really help the defense on that fourth line center. I like that a lot. So, Glenn Denning there. And then we have Colin Miller as well. So, that's going to be a glitch. We can go to AHL, switch back to NHL. And you will see that that is gone. Now, Valamaki switching. So, Colin Miller is a two-way defender with Keandre Miller. And then Valamaki gets a two-way defender down here with Robert Hag, who is defensive. Oh, you know what? This reshaping of the team, I really, really, really like. So, now that we have Luke Glendening here... Let's go ahead and look at the penalty kill. Now they have penalty kill, Luke Glendening on line one. Line two, we have Kopp and Kubalik. Line three, we have Larkin and Bertuzzi with the minus three. They're not going to get much ice time, and they're still at 86 and 83, so that's not too bad. Um, I do really like having Glendening on that first line. But what we're going to do is him and Sunfist are going to swap, so Glendening is on the center roll with that 90 face-offs. I like that a lot. So, um, I, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of getting Glenn Denning back. And here's the thing is, even if he drops off to a 79, that defensive, those defensive stats aren't going to drop off too hard. Yeah, I really like that. I really, really like that. Okay, so our def our defensive structure should get a lot better. Our penalty kill should get better. I am very, very happy with that trade. Suter for Glenn Denning. Because um, Rasmussen was a minus five. Sunkfist was a minus four. But Glenn Denning is a plus two. And I guarantee he was getting fourth line time on his team. On a good team like Dallas? Yeah, definitely. So now, 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 I think this is the team we try to run with. We are above 500 by four games. We got a lot of calorie. We got a lot of salary cap available. We have 11.5 mil. Bring Glenn Denning back to Detroit to retire here. He's been here. He was here for so long. Getting him back here is nice. Now, let me get a drink of water really quick. And we are here at the beginning of February. Um, I think for this video, um, we are going to go ahead and get up to the trade deadline for sure. If it looks like we're still decently above 500 and contending for a playoff spot, um, I don't think we want to touch the team at all. If we're not, um, I mean, here's the thing is, I don't think I want to touch this team this season. I don't think I want to go to the trade deadline and trade someone like Larkin or Bertuzzi. We still have like a five, six year plan with these guys. Um, I think that we definitely want to stick to that. Um, and when we're going to have to decide how long we have a run for is going to be at the re-sign phase and that's how long we're going to sign our contracts for so 
let's go ahead and just get up to the trade deadline for the heck of it and we will see uh where our team is sitting in the standings now we got a game against edmonton here high firepower team and we do end up outscoring them what about the flames uh five to two loss um let's check out vancouver 28 and 20 they are 29 so we did lose that game let's see what we're looking at here we got another win so we're two and two here uh edmonton again we can't quite take it uh calgary is just beating us up this year check out seattle hopefully we can take this game it's another loss we're getting close to a 500 here we got a win against the capitals which is nice how about the rangers they're a really good team ah by one goal so the odd part is, is we definitely became a better defensive team hmm but we dropped a lot of games here we're at 500 we're four points let's see yeah we're four points out of a wild card spot behind the bruins which are a very good team i don't expect them to stay 29 and 25 uh let's check over here the capital yeah i mean the blue jackets might fall a little bit but they're all they have a solid team on paper i don't know why they're not performing in real life but the capitals are a solid team the flyers are even up there at 65 so i think we'll have to chase our division but i mean we're 500 we had a rough stretch here uh let's see since this simulation we had one two three four wins four and one two three four five six seven eight four and eight which is not too great um but i honestly think that was a pretty difficult month with two oilers games two flyers games a rangers game a lightning game um i think it was a really tough month so i think we will perform better in the not as tough months and the canucks were the canucks are actually doing pretty well they're sitting at a third in their division with 60 points so we did have a pretty tough month here um pretty stacked up month so let's go ahead and honestly we can go ahead and hop into the trade deadline for the end of this video uh we'll see what kind of moves get made around the league Oh, excuse the cough and um that's how we're gonna end is right after the trade deadline and then we'll get the rest of the season in the playoffs if we make it done in the next video so let's go ahead and hop into here we have to go down and simulate to here so realistically I don't think we're a buyer or a seller. I don't think we have anything to give up. And I don't think, like, I don't think we have anything to give up to get top end players. I also don't want to ditch our top end players. So I think we're just going to keep current trade block going in and enter the trade deadline. So we're going to take a look at what players are on the block. So Patrick Kane, um, I have seen him on the block in every other franchise mode I've done in this game. Um, so that's not too surprising for me i don't think we want to go for someone like patrick kane we just don't have the assets to trade for him we have bo horvat Kristen jari jared spurgeon ryan ellis matt zuccarello Jonas brodeen varlamov josh norris dumba so realistically i don't think we're gonna be making any moves we have a trade alert the islanders here islanders trade rajan yemi a fifth round and a sixth round and Lennox to the wild in exchange for Ryan Hartman and Alex Goligoski. So the Islanders are beefing up their team a little bit. <clears throat> That's interesting to see. They're a good team. So they're definitely trying to make a run for those playoffs. Um, but I think we're just going to speed up through this and we will cut back if there are any other trades. So I will see you guys whenever that comes up. All right, we have a trade alert. Uh, Minnesota Wild again are making moves. Matt Dumba and a fourth rounder to the Edmonton Oilers for Bojo Tulio and a second rounder. So Edmonton beefing up their defensive line too. That's going to look interesting. Edmonton's going to be a powerhouse team here. We have another trade. The Winnipeg Jets traded 2024 second rounder Salomon and Wagner to the Penguins in exchange for Jan Ruda and Jason Zucker. Interesting. So Winnipeg trying to beef up their team here, trying to make a run for the playoffs. Trade alert, Boston, Lysel, 23 third rounder, 23 fifth rounder, and Callahan in exchange for Ryan Graves, a third and a sixth. That's interesting. All right, so jumping back in here. Um, I think rather than sitting here, I think what we're going to go ahead and do is 
Oh, we have one more trade to look at before we exit the trade deadline. Carolina Hurricanes, Suzuki Nystrom to the Minnesota Wild in exchange for Frederick Goudreau and a third. So what I think we're going to do here is we're going to exit the trade deadline. Uh, we don't have those blockbuster trade alerts on. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we will just hop into the transactions for the league to see what other moves have been made. Um, and we can take a look at how the NHL is shaping up through the 22-23 season at the trade deadline. But let's go ahead and hop in and check that. So we are looking at Bertuzzi being the team leader in points. That's interesting. Uh, let's go over to league uh, activity feed. Is there a way to sort this? I'm pretty sure there is message center. We have um, player and pick trading. So Vancouver acquired a Finisev. Let's go ahead and go down to the bottom. Let's see. We've already seen. Which ones have we already seen? So yeah, there's no way to just see blockbusters. So we saw this Frederick Gujar run. So here we are. Anything. So that St. Louis trade is not really much. The Colorado trade, but Max Domi and Athens CU from Chicago for Nashville. Chicago acquired a second round pick and a fifth round pick from Nashville. <clears throat> wow, that's a big trade. Uh, let's see. Vancouver didn't acquire anything big, but Buffalo acquired Ilya Mikheyev. Uh, that's interesting. Cocking in. And Ellis from Toronto. Nudie Vara goes to Toronto. The Toronto beefing up their blue line a little bit. Dallas got Matt Nieto and the San, San Jose Sharks get Stankovin and a sixth round. Connor Zarian, John Beck. Carson Soucy goes to Calgary. Sean Monahan goes to Anaheim. Um, Matt Zuccarello goes to the Pittsburgh Penguins. And Minnesota acquired Owen Pickering. Uh, let's see. Uh, Justin Braun goes to Washington. Uh, Luke Shen goes to St. Louis to go play with his brother. That's interesting. Or Braden Shen is probably in Philadelphia, but <clears throat> nevertheless, uh, let's see. Andre Kuzmenko goes to Nashville and Afinaseev goes to Vancouver. So there were actually just a couple teams that made a lot of moves. I noticed the Minnesota Wild made a lot of moves. The Canucks made a lot of moves. Um, <clears throat> so that's really interesting. But uh, we didn't make any moves. So we're sitting here at 500. Hopefully we can have a good end of the season, potentially make the playoffs year one. I say potentially, um, but I don't think we're trading in for any draft picks. I think we already have the big pieces we need for the future. Uh, I think this is more of a waiting game to see when these players are all ready to uh, make a big push. So let's go ahead and in this video, we're just going to get to the end of the season, see how it plays out. Um, <clears throat> so we're not actually ending the video here. Now we do drop below 500. Uh, let's see if we can pull this back chicago we do take a game off chicago which is interesting boston is a big game to take a to take a game off of let's see how this works out uh, we do lose to boston twice in a row that's not good we gave them more points we do win against nashville um let's see about colorado now they are a good team um so we can see how we work against them we do lose for nothing to them how about the panthers given more points and cop has been injured so dropping below 500 as well as losing our top players that is not good i think that might spell disaster for this uh for this red wings team for this year let's go ahead and move glenn denning up to the third line we're gonna go ahead and toss in um adam ernie again and then we can go ahead and move rasmussen back to the center position rasmussen did jump up to an 80 which is nice. Um, I don't think he'll jump too much more. He has top six medium. Hopefully he can, but I don't think he will. Um, so we can go ahead and get back out. It's just an NHL. Oh, is it going to bug out? It bugged out. So we got to go ahead and cancel. It'll go ahead and get us back. So we did take a point off of St. Louis, and then we won a game. So we're getting closer, but I think it's just too many. We're nine points. We're seven points outside of a playoff spot. It's not impossible. It is just improbable. Let's go ahead and see how the season ends. Um, Philadelphia, we take the game off of. We're on the right track here. Pittsburgh fired their head coach. They're not a great team, and we get caught back here, so that's really nice. Let's go ahead and take Ernie out. 
Raymond is up to an 86 already, so that's really nice. He should jump up pretty high for the next season. Um, let's go ahead and get Cop in here for Ernie. Cop up on the second line. Um, wait, I thought we had a plus three on that second line. Am I wrong? I thought we had a plus three on that second line. Interesting. Could have swore we had a plus three before he got injured. Hmm. All right. Well, I mean, still plus one, so not too bad. Make sure our defense is still the way we want it. Yep, we're all good there. And uh, check our goalies. Huso is in there. He's got 28 wins on the season. He's having a good year. Check Nadelkovic. He's having a he's having a backup year. Um, so. I think we are going to go ahead and keep moving forward. We're on the right track. We started to get some more points. Let's go ahead and cancel the sim. Oh, oh. All right. We are on a three game win streak. We're back to 579 points and 81. So we're six games. We're six points behind a playoff spot, which isn't too bad. We need to have a good end here. We still got, what is it? Nine games left in the season. So <clears throat> there's a chance. We have 18 possible points. I think we're going to need probably at least they're an above 500 team. They have nine games left, so we assume they win five. They're going to get 10 points. So they're going to be at 89 points. We're going to need 17 points out of it. Ah, it might be a little too far out of reach. Might be a little too far out of reach. Let's see, though. Another win off of Cal or off of Carolina. Another win off of Winnipeg. I'm going to cancel here. We take a point off of our divisional team. We're actually clawing our way back in. We're only four points behind the Senators. We're only four points behind a wild card spot, and we are looking pretty decent here. We're having a good end of the season. So, I mean, they're simulating well this way. We got two teams underneath us. We definitely want to take these games. Pittsburgh is a bad team as well. But then we have, I think, three pretty good teams here at the end of the year. Let's see if we can take these three games. These are the three games we have to take here. I don't. We don't want to lose any points. That's two points there. Against Buffalo, uh, we don't get any points. We needed at least one there. We need two here from Pittsburgh. And we get two. We're three points behind a playoff spot. We are tied for the fourth spot over there in the Metro. Oh, this is going to be close. We're a decent team here. We're a decent team here. I would want to make the playoffs and not risk. Because <clears throat> here's the thing. If we don't make the playoffs, I don't think we're getting a lottery pick. There's four underneath us there. We got six underneath us, seven underneath us. We got eight, nine underneath us. So we're looking at 10th in the NHL right now. We either need to lose all three and hope we have a couple teams pull us up or like pull above us, or we need to... Uh, we really need to win all three of these games. They're against tough teams. So looks like Carolina's even with us. Dallas is a good team and Tampa Bay is a good team. They have 102 points already. Where is Carolina sitting? Carolina is sitting seventh in their division by the same place that we are. We're sixth. And then how about Dallas? So Dallas is sitting at 91 points at fourth place in a wild card spot. So I think we could definitely take these two games I think we need to, and then maybe get a point off of Tampa, and it might be close. Let's see how it goes. Actually, you know what? We're going to do the slow sim. It, depending, I mean, I think regular season is where we're for sure going to end this video. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. Yeah, I'm cool with the AHL game being simmed. Let me get a drink of water really quick. All right, so we have the first period here against Dallas. Who has the opening pressure? Let's go ahead and just see. Opening pressure, Dallas seems to have control early. Period one, let's see how it goes. Ah, Dallas scores Garyanov. I was considering trading for him too. All right, let's see, period two. Oh, and Huso has a bad period. Honestly, five to nothing. It's going to wildly surprise me if we come back. We only have 11 shots after two periods. Dallas is just wildly outplaying us. What? Verana, Miller, Perron, Glendening, Zadina, and Raymond 
all come together in the third period to tie it up six to six we get a point off of a good team now what we're going to go ahead and do here is we are going to jump into the overtime game and watch it now we're going to make it a cpu versus cpu game so we are going to watch it let's go ahead and ready up ready up and uh what we're going to do is go ahead and go to game settings now i don't want this thing flying by us i definitely want them to be able to play the, the the way that they are supposed to be able to play so um let's go ahead and i think it'll be in game settings here let's hop in and period length uh we want to make it full time because overtime is only going to be five minutes but this is going to make it an actual five minutes um, as far as difficulty all-star we're going to leave that uh, and then we're going to go ahead and hop into visual settings. And we are going to go ahead and toss the camera on true broadcast. So let's go ahead and hop into this overtime game against Dallas. We take a point off of them, which is big. Now they have a little bit more. They have better studs than we do. But it looks like we have better defense and better goaltending. Let's, I mean, but they have Ottinger. That's a good goalie. We can't dis we can't discourage Ottinger. Huso gave up a lot, so it might be Nedeljkovic in net at this point, but it might also be their backup. The All right. Let's see how this goes. All right, three on three overtime. We definitely have good speed here. So this plays out. Rupe hand. Oh, Larkin, you have the game on your stick. Larkin, you have the game on your stick. Wheels. Larkin let's go we take the game off of dallas the captain comes in clutch after seeing his whole team play their asses off in the third period oops sorry youtube play their butts off in the third period we have the captain step up and say listen the team decided to get us back in this i'm the captain let's go ahead and win this game make it snappy dylan larkin x factor 26 goals 26th goal of the year looking good and that is good to see S saluting the hometown crowd you love to see it and dylan larkin makes it a seven to six game for the red wings so they take two points in that game that's what we needed let's go ahead and hop back in they were wildly outperformed 35 to 22 in shots is big that is to be able to come back and win that game that is massive that is absolutely huge so let's see where we're sitting now we're going to go ahead and just simulate up to the carolina day we are one point behind the panthers so we're going to go ahead and do this again sim game let's see carolina is going to it's a relatively even game let's see if we can uh let's see if we can take two points off of carolina first period Oh, Carolina scores two. Max Patch, you're ready. And Jordan Stahl. Second period. Ah, they pull ahead again. Tara Vinen twice. But Pertuzzi gets us on the score sheet first in the period. But Tara Vinen himself scores 31 seconds apart on Nadelkovic. It is a backup day. I should have definitely went and put in Huso for these last couple of games. All right. So we're going to real-time sim this third period. Power play for Detroit early. Oh, they can't capitalize. They're out shooting. They have the pressure. Maybe this is a comeback squad. We got to get one. So oh, and Carolina gets one with Brent Burns on the Delk of it. Oh, and yeah. Oh, they're just pushing it out of reach. Let's go ahead and finish the sim. Roslovic gets one late, but it's just not enough. We don't get any points off of Carolina. Let's go ahead and see where we sit going into the last game of the regular season. Let's sim up to here. It might be out of reach if the Panthers want it. The Panthers have only one game left. They're one game up. I don't know who they're playing. Let's see where the wild card's sitting here at. 84 points. So we might also have to contest with the Hurricanes if they win their game. Oh, that was a big game. We needed to win that. All right. Against what? Oh, the Avalanche have 119 points. Whoa. Against the best team in our division, against the dynasty of the current era, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Let's see if these young Red Wings can really pull it through against a veteran squad like the Lightning and get it done. First period. Lightning are up one nothing, but it's on. It was Stamkos. He's in his wheelhouse over there on the side of the net. 
But that's not out of reach. Second period. Oh, Lucas Raymond brings it back. Let's go ahead and real-time sim the third. Now, we're pretty even on shots, but Tampa Bay has possession here. Detroit on a power play. Can't capitalize the power play. Oh, and Roslovic makes us up one. Let's just hold out. Hold out, Red Wings. They have a fire of a power play. Put it out of reach. Oh, power play. Put it out of reach. Oh, 30 seconds. And the Red Wings take a game off the Lightning to end the season. This is big. This is big. All right. We lie in the hands of the Panthers. Boys and girls. GM mugs. GM the real mugs. It's not an impressive year. It's 39. We don't even have a 40 win year. But GM mugs pulls the Red Wings back into their winning ways. He pulls them back into the playoffs. And we are here.